lost world, of microbes from over a billion years ago. Fossilized traces of biomarkers dating back over one and a half billion years have revealed a whole community of previously unknown organisms that once dominated life on Earth. They differed from the complex life we know today in cellular structure and possibly metabolism. Scientists speculate that these could have been the first predators on the planet and they could have given rise to modern plants and animals. Rocks hundreds of meters beneath Australia's deserts have provided clues about a long extinct world of primitive microbes that once inhabited the oceans. Researchers have been able to isolate fat-like molecules from the rocks. Their analysis suggests that they were produced by a previously unknown, ancient population of eukaryotes. Eukaryotes is the term for organisms, animals, plants and fungi, that have a cell nucleus and chromosomes. The compounds found are 1.6 billion years old. This means that these microbes at that time may have been much more widespread and much more numerous than previously thought. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Nature. Most eukaryotes known today use fat-like compounds, called sterols, for various purposes, such as building cell membranes. Sterols are present throughout the family tree, which is why scientists believe that they were also present in the last common ancestor of all modern eukaryotes. Paleontologists therefore decided to use these compounds as a biomarker for the presence of eukaryotes in ancient rocks. So far, researchers have been unable to find traces of sterols in rocks older than 800 million years. Although fossils of red and green algae, eukaryotes, have been discovered that date back to about a billion years. For this reason, Scientists speculated that these microbes 800 million years ago were not very numerous. However, a group of researchers decided to look for traces of other particles. The team was led by Benjamin Nettersheim, a geobiologist at the University of Bremen, and Jochen Brox, a paleobiochemist at the Australian National University in Canberra. Researchers focused on the search for traces of molecules that modern eukaryotes produce when synthesizing sterols. Such modern intermediates may have been the end product for ancient eukaryotic ancestors. The team studied rocks from around the world and found evidence that protosterols were common in aquatic environments as far back as 1.6 billion years ago. This may prove that eukaryotes which produce more complex compounds, displaced, their more primitive relatives between a billion and 800 million years ago. New research explains why scientists have so far been unable to find biochemical clues to support the fossil record. They were just looking for the wrong thing. However, Andrew Roger, who studies eukaryotic evolution at Dalhousie University in Halifax, Canada, notes that fossil red and green algae from a billion years ago look remarkably similar to living algae and likely produced more complex sterols. This means that traces of more complex compounds should also be present in older rocks. This discovery raises as many questions as it answers, says the expert. The researchers also couldn't rule out the possibility that the protosterols were produced by ancient bacteria. More research is needed to unravel the mysteries of ancient microbes. Although these organisms, the researchers believe, were abundant in marine ecosystems, we have no idea what they might have looked like. They were certainly much more complex than bacteria. However, they were very different from the eukaryotes we know today because they evolved on a planet where there was very little oxygen. From oils, oxygen levels in the atmosphere may have played a role in the evolution of eukaryotes, given that most eukaryotes use oxygen in their metabolism. 
These organisms evolved in a completely different environment than today. Scientists believe that they may have been feeding on microbes of that time. We think they may have been Earth's first predators, hunting and eating bacteria, Brox said. thousand-year-old viruses discovered in Tibetan glacier years. Scientists studying glaciers in the Tibetan plateau have found viruses with almost 15,000 years of age. Years. Most of them are different from the viruses catalogued so far. These findings could help scientists understand how viruses have evolved over the centuries. Researchers at Ohio State University analyzed ice cores taken in 2015 from the Gulia Glacier in western China. These cores contain layers of ice that have gradually built up over the centuries. Trapping in their icy embrace everything that was in the atmosphere around them. Dust particles, plant pollen and various microorganisms. These layers are a kind of time capsule containing clues about the conditions that prevailed centuries ago. Scientists use them to better understand climate change, the evolution of microbes and viruses throughout history. Climate change is causing vast areas of permafrost to melt, revealing valuable specimens from the distant past. In recent years, Many perfectly preserved animals from the Ice Age have been found, including mammoths, woolly rhinos, foals, cave lions and wolves. It can be assumed that in the near future, as the melting process continues, there will be more and more similar specimens. But permafrost also reveals organisms that we won't see with the naked eye. We're talking about ancient microbes. The consequences of this phenomenon are not yet fully understood, and the progressive melting raises many questions for researchers, including whether microorganisms trapped in permafrost can wake up after thousands of years. Permafrost occupies huge areas, and its components differ from each other, depending on their location on the world map. With glaciers melting faster and faster, it's a challenge for scientists to discover and identify the microbes, bacteria and viruses that may be found in them. Drowning will not only lead to the loss of this archive of ancient microbes and viruses, but will also release them into the environment in the future, the researchers write in a new paper appearing in the journal Microbiome. DOI 10.1186 per second 40168 021 01106N. For this study, the researchers analyzed ice cores collected in 2015 in the Tibetan Plateau. In the samples, scientists were able to identify dozens of previously unknown viruses that have 15,000 years. These glaciers formed gradually, and along with dust and other components, many viruses also accumulated in this ice, said Xi Ping Jung of Ohio State University, the study's lead author. Glaciers in western China are not well studied. Our goal is to analyze them and use this information to gain insight into past environments. And viruses are part of those environments, he added. Using a combination of traditional and novel ice core dating techniques, scientists determined that the ice was almost 15,000 years old. Years. They found the genetic material of 33 viruses in the ice. Four of them have already been identified by the scientific community. But the rest are hitherto unknown viruses. What's more? When the researchers thawed the samples, about half of them began to show signs of activity. These are viruses that thrived in extreme environments, said Matthew Sullivan, co-author of the study. These viruses have gene signatures that help them infect cells in cold environments. 
These signatures show how the virus is able to survive in extreme conditions, he added. For this study, scientists developed a new, ultra-pure method for analyzing microbes and viruses found in ice without contaminating the samples. Xi Ping's method of decontaminating cores and studying microbes and viruses in the ice could help us search for genetic sequences in other extreme icy environments, on Mars. The moon and the Atacama Desert, said Sullivan. Database comparisons showed that the four previously identified viruses are bacteriophages that typically infect bacteria. After analyzing the rest of the unknown viruses, the researchers concluded that these viruses likely originated in plant or soil habitats, not animals or humans, and likely facilitated the nutrient acquisition of their hosts. The researchers also found that the viruses in the tested material are present in concentrations much lower than those found in the oceans or soil. The study of viruses released by permafrost is a relatively new field. But these are not the first such finds. With the ongoing climate change, similar research is becoming more and more important. We don't know much about the viruses and microbes in these extreme environments and what's really out there, said study co-author Lonnie Thompson. Documenting and understanding this is extremely important.